All right, this uh, video is a review of the IP practice problem which has been posted to eLearn. Now, by this time, you should have watched the um, video on the uh, portion of Chapter 9 that deals with intellectual property. Um, having finished that video, um, I hope you have tried to do this problem. If you haven't tried to do the problem, my, I highly recommend right now that you turn this video off, you attempt to answer the problem, and then come back and watch the video because then you'll understand what you know and what you didn't know and then you'll be able to prepare better for uh, the exam because there will be um, intellectual property material in the midterm exam. Um, all right, presuming that you have already done the problem, we will proceed. Um, with the extreme sport of whitewater skiing become more and more popular, Garnet Gadget recognized an opportunity to provide safety accessories for the skiing enthusiasts. Many lightweight safety helmets were appearing in the marketplace, but no one was addressing the problem of white water spray, which made it difficult for the skiers to see upcoming obstacles in the river. So Garnet developed a set of attractively shaped lightweight goggles with special unique ground lenses that allowed the skier to discern the delineations between the water frothy waves and rocks more clearly. To deal with the water spray, he developed a small, unique battery-powered motor which powered little windshield wipers that kept the lenses clear. The sophisticated goggles were required, uh, required the drafting of an operational manual. He called the glasses gladiator goggles. Then Garnet began to approach companies to find one that would manufacture uh, his uh, gadget. Using the information above indicate six aspects of the gladiator goggles which might be protected by our intellectual property laws. All right, now the first one is, uh, as you're reading, he developed a set of attractively shaped weight, uh, uh, lightweight goggles. Well, attractively shaped means industrial design. So you file an application under the Industrial Design Act that lasts for 10 years, the protection, um, and you mark the product generally with a D in a circle um, and the date that you filed. Uh, then you read a little farther and it says um, uniquely ground lenses. Uh, uniquely ground lenses. As soon as you see unique, you realize it's a potential patent here because a, a patent has to have three elements. It has to be unique, it has to be ingenious, and it has to be useful. Well, okay, unique. Yes, ingenious, obviously, he's invented this, um, and um, it has a, a use. So you can file a patent on the lenses. Now, goggles are goggles are goggles are goggles, so I, you might be able to do a patent on the goggles, but there's two aspects of the goggles that really require the uniqueness. One's the lenses, and then the other, of course, is that uniquely battery-powered motor. Ah, unique. So you can file a patent on the battery-powered motor. How long do these patent protections last? 20 years, okay, and then um, the uh, uh, information falls into the public domain and anyone can produce the product. Um, in fact, the protection lasts a little bit longer because you're also protected usually in the period uh, when you file the patent until such time as it's actually prosecuted and granted to you, and that can be anywhere from two to three years uh, during the patent pending process. Okay, then we look at um, the sophisticated goggles required the drafting of an operations manual. Well, how can you get into something like a book, manual, art? then you know it's a copyright, okay? So he can file copyright under the Copyright Act. How long does it last? It lasts for the life of the author, plus 50 years, except under NAFTA, or pardon me, the USMCA, in which case it's 50 years, uh, the life of the author, plus 75 years, bringing us uh, into the same category as the United States. Okay, um, let's see. Emmanuel... Uh, oh, the glasses are called Gladiator Goggles. Fancy name. Trademark. Ah, trademark. Okay. No, that's not enough. You see on the uh, answer sheet it says 4A and 4B. Well, you'd want to file and register a trademark um, uh, under the Trademark Act in order to um, uh, protect the name in all of Canada and under USMCA, the United States and Mexico as well. 
Um, how do you mark it? Well, it would be an R in a circle. Um, or in Canada, you could put a TM, but because you're going to mark it in the States as well, you want to put an R in a circle. Um, in the United States, it would be MR. In, Me in the United States of Mexico, it would be MR in a circle, which marquee registrar. Um, all right, how long does the production last? Um, a trademark lasts 15 years plus 15 years plus 15 years plus 15 years, as long as just before the expiration of the trademark, you file a renewal. In the United States, it's 10 years plus 10 years plus 10 years plus 10 years, but the same effect in the end. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about Mexico. Um, okay, so that's how long it lasts, you know, how long it marks. Uh, yeah. Uh, good, let's go on. Oh, well, there's two aspects to trademark protection. There is trademark protection under the Trademark Act, but you can also sue somebody for the tort of passing off. So that would be 4B. Okay, how long does the protection last? As long as you're using the mark in a, in a uh, trademark sense. Number five, well, number five, which in effect is number six. Um, what could this be? Well, he approaches manufacturers. Um, your patent protection um, will uh, be impossible to apply for if this is considered to be prior art, okay? Or the idea that um, the the idea is now in the public domain. So if you approach a bunch of manufacturers and all these people know about it, and, and you're distributing your drawings to see if you can. Uh, um, make the product then uh, it might be considered prior art it's obvious because it's out in the marketplace if you start marking it wow you get a real problem because you have a one year sort of grace period in which you can start marking it and say oh okay i forgot to put on a patent but i can okay but after that one year period it's prior art and you don't get a patent on it um, so those are the six things that you can do in order to try to protect your intellectual property. Okay, and that concludes this very short video. Thanks a lot.